Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Stational Constructs mod, which is being compiled by forum user Jerry Aya. And I say compiled this time, as what this mod pack actually is, is a small collection of previously abandoned mod packs combined together here by our new mod maker to give them a second life. And they are pretty awesome. Awesome, mostly structural components, but some pretty great ones to play with. So let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. And I'm surprised I hadn't seen this one before. I only really noticed it around this time because it was, of course, recently updated to the latest 1.6.1 version of the game. And I'm glad I saw it. So let's take a look at our first parts here, which are in the command pods category. And they are giant rings, which are beautiful. And the first one is the Gene Type 1, which if we connect right on there to our capsule for size comparison, you can see it's freaking massive and pretty cool looking. I very much do like this one especially. And now as for its stats on it, it is a command pod and it requires a minimum of one crew member to operate, but can hold up to 20 crew members and weighs a whopping 271 tons. It's heavy, but man does it hold a lot of Kerbals and that is a wonderful thing. It of course does also have a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, crew report has some switchable subtypes which we'll get to here in a moment as well as a gigantic battery of a hundred and fifty thousand a fuel tank of nineteen thousand two hundred a mono propellant of one thousand five hundred and oxidizer of twenty three thousand four hundred and seventy so quite a lot of resources in a pretty big package now as for the subtypes that we have here we are able to switch between them if we right click onto the part and can switch uh, right here in the subtypes where we either have all out or in and what these actually give us is where the extra attachment points are for this thing now by default we have as you can see a uh, attachment point right there in the center we then have a number of attachment points on the interior of the ring and then a number of attachment points on the exterior of the ring and when you switch between these they turn off different ones so all will give you all of those attachment points out will only give you the exterior attachment points, not the interior of the ring. And in will just give you the attachment points or attachment nodes rather on the interior of the ring and not the exterior. So that is a good to know. And we also have the ability to switch the subtypes here with this little UI as well. And uh, yeah, I can also turn on the lights. There we are, beautiful thing. Now next we have another ring, the Jing Type 2. Now this one can again hold up to 20 Kerbals, but this can actually be unmanned, so you don't need anyone in here. It's a little bit more sci-fi looking, but still quite a cool part. Also does have a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, crew report, has a few more attachment node subtypes that you can choose from. The same amount of electric charge, liquid fuel, oxidizer, and monopropellant. So uh, all in all, the big difference here besides the style is the subtypes. Now on this one, as you can see, we not only have the center attachment node as well as the interior and exterior, but we also have some extra ones on top of the ring and on the bottom of the ring on the flat bits there. And again, just switching between the subtypes turns on or off those different ones. So you either have all, the middle, the top, bottom, the out, the in, just the top, and just the bottom. And so yeah, a few more options for configuration there. And also once more, we have lights. Beautiful. Now the next bits are in here in the fuel tanks category. And these ones are interesting as they look like engines but they're fuel tanks. Now we have uh, three different ones here, all 2.5 radially mounted fuel tanks with the Type 1, the Type 2, and then the Type 
3. Now, they look very much like engines, especially with the bottom bit, but uh, they are just purely fuel tanks with the Type 1 holding 540 liquid fuel and 660 oxidizer, the Type 2 holding 1080 liquid fuel and 1320 oxidizer, and the Type 3 holding the same amount as the Type 2, just sort of turned 90 degrees, basically. Now, I say they look like engines, besides the fact that they do have a little nozzle looking thing down here, but also because in the next category, when engines, we have identical looking things, but that are actually engines. And there we go, we have the Type 1, the Type 2, and the Type 3 here of the Jaipir engines. Now they of course do have intakes on the top as you can see here, very nice looking, good styling to them. Slightly different in their coloration, but other than that, they are more or less identical, except these engines have more than just fuel tanks. In fact, actually, oh god, come on, stick there. Uh, they do have some liquid fuel and oxidizer, but not as much as the tanks themselves. Now, they are engines with dual-use modes. In one mode, they'll have a max thrust of 720 kilonewtons in a vacuum using liquid fuel and oxidizer. And then we have the version using just liquid fuel and air intake, producing 420 max kilonewtons of thrust. Uh, the Type 1 also has 3 degrees of gimbling, a built-in air intake, 1620 liquid fuel, and 1980 on the oxidizer. Now the Type 2 will produce a whopping 1440 kilonewtons using liquid fuel and oxidizer and 840 kilonewtons of thrust with air intake. Again, same degrees of gimbling. Uh, this one though having 3240 liquid fuel and 3960 oxidizer. With the Type 3 being identical but just once again being you know, kind of turned 90 degrees. So whichever way you go with, they are some pretty nice quality in engines, and of course, fuel tanks. Good old fuel tanks. I do like the styling on them though, again, pretty sci-fi, but cool indeed. Now, nothing in command and control, but in structural is where the rest of the parts live, as we don't have anything in coupling, payload, aerodynamics, ground, thermal, electric, communication, science, or utility. So all left in structural. Where the first bit we have is the canister column, which is just a big column thing where you can put canisters into. Pretty self-explanatory. We then have a gapped a canister. There we go. Pretty similar to the other, but only uh, three sort of side braces rather than four and no central column. We then have a very interesting part, a Jing Profile Type 1. This is another ring, but this one purely structural and holy crap, look at all those attachment nodes. So many attachment nodes. It's gorgeous. You can do a lot with this thing. Now again, it has the various subtypes and a lot more than the previous two rings, as this time we have all center, out, in, ring top, ring bottom, ra ramp top, ramp bottom, 90D, 45D, 22.5T, 18D, 9D, and it just keeps going. Look at all the freaking types we have. It's, it would take me ages to go through all of them. And all just being different configurations of the attachment nodes that we have. Now, the reason we have so many is, well, you can cover each individual part of this ring with a wall, if you desire. As we have right here, the uh, Jing Wall In Type 1, and that goes on this interior section of the ring right here. We then have the out wall type one, which goes out here. We then have the ramp bottom type, which goes under here, right there. We then have the ramp top type, which goes right there, but needs to be slightly adjusted. And then the top and bottom piece that goes into these slots. Again, it may need a little bit of adjustment when you're building, but uh, overall, that's uh, where those bits go. And you can, if you so desire, fill in this entire thing with hundreds of parts, or just fill in where you want, or not fill it in at all. You've got options with all those different subtypes, so you can really play around with that. Now, besides these, we also have uh, some L-beams. We have the L-beam akimbo, which if we just sort of plop on the side over here, there it is, has a nice attachment node on the side there, and then another one on that top bracket there. 
We then have the L-beam flush, which actually sits on the top. There we are, but with the, the another attachment node on the top there. We then also have the S-beam, which is an S in shape with an attachment node on the bottom and top. We then have the mountable size to size expander, which we can pop right there and is a part. And then we have the stack spider, which we can go right there, has an attachment point for uh, in the center and then also four attachment points that are actually at angles on the side there, if we do zoom in to get a better look at that. There we go, you can see it at a about 45 degree angle. And then finally we have the stack trider. Now this one actually has a couple of subtypes. Again, just changing where the attachment nodes are. And oop, I forgot to mention that on this part as well. Again, we have subtypes changing the attachment points between either all the center point and the leg points. And yeah, those are all the freaking parts. They are some pretty fun ones. I especially love the rings. I really like the Type 1 Jing profile. It's just such a beautiful structural ring piece with so many possibilities. It is truly gorgeous. So let's see a monstrosity of a ship that I built earlier to sort of show off this stuff a little bit and some form of minor creativity on my part. Not the greatest, but there we go. I put a ship into orbit, clearly using a uh, hyper edit because holy crap, this thing is big and heavy. But uh, yeah, we've got some of the S brackets being used as a support between the main column of the ship and the ring. We have one ring, which is purely structural, one ring which has the exterior walls. I was gonna put the interior walls too, but oh my god, I got, I got bored after a little while, because each one of those was individually placed. Oh boy. It's nice though, having that option. And uh, then of course we have the fuel tanks down here with some engines, which of course we can fire up. There we go, good sound to them, good animation. There we are, throttle that back down. And all in all, a cool weird looking ship. I just, I love anything with rings. I am a sucker for parts with rings. It makes me happy. Let's turn on all the lights. There we go. Uh, yeah, I just, I really love that sort of stuff. And with especially this structural ring, like I said, so many possibilities, but plus the others are just fun as well. Uh, so yeah, if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But uh, that, my friends, is going to be it for uh, this episode today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next one. Hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.